Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Silas coming to you from a shithole somewhere in Africa. Actually, I'm here in Nairobi, Kenya. This video, I'm going to be talking about the comments that Donald J. Trump made uh, during an immigration meeting <laughs> where he referred to countries like El Salvador and Haiti as shitholes in Africa. He said, why are we letting people in from these shithole countries instead of places like, like Norway? We should be letting in people from Norway or something. Now, off the break, the use of language. What do you guys think about the use of language? This is a whole age where people get microaggressed. People are triggered for the smallest things. A lot of situations people will say it's not that he said it, it's that it's not politically correct. So with the language itself, I have a story about this shit, this word. Um, the other day, we were at a um, fire with my family. Um, <laughs> we were seeing some elephants walking by and then my dad pointed out and said look there's a pile of shit down there or something and then my three-year-old nephew he was like what is shit what is shit in his little tiny voice and a little tiny voice but in his little voice and that was i think i think that was probably the first time i can actually recall my dad cursing out in public like that i can't actually remember any other time but for my nephew, definitely the first time hearing him say shit, but he said that a couple of times. We were laughing about it and like, oh, to hear my my sister comment and also, oh, that's the first time I've heard my dad curse. And then now my son has picked it up. And see, that's just a word in that sense. If you heard him say that, if some car was driving by and heard him say that, they're like, why are you stepping in the shit or something like that? No one would be offended for it because the word itself is not necessarily offensive. It's the context. It's a situation where somebody say he's not being presidential by saying this. He shouldn't say this in this way. And then, of course, people from the countries that he's referring to, even if it's tangentially, they are as politicians or people understand enough people in my country are going to be offended by this. So I have to demand the apology, have to come out and do this. This is MAGA all over again. And not the Make America Great Again, although I'll come back to that, but the Make Americans Genuflect Again, or Make All of Us Genuflect Again. And this is what people are doing. They're like, oh, oh no, oh, I can't believe, I can't believe this had that. Can't believe that. Why, why are you surprised? Why would you be surprised that he said this in a closed door meetings? This is the way he is. A lot of people say this is a brash man, although some people, to be honest, aren't saying this surprise. Some people are saying this is what this is what we're talking about. This is what we're apologizing about. This is the buffoon in chief that we're apologizing about. Now with that kind of situation, why are you apologizing? Why have a lot of people in America and the West been apologizing for years about what their country has done to other countries? First of all, they part of that is because they are not as happy with where they live. This happens a lot. In my New Year's message, first I opened up with saying, Donald J. Trump, good, good and bad news, Donald J. Trump is the president of the United States of America, whether you like it or not. And I think even the people who don't like it, like it for other reasons. And the people who like it, don't like it for other reasons. Then the end part was, people are going to continue to complain about places they are, yet stay in those places. Because people think other places are worse. If you live in a city, you complain, you complain, you complain, but chances are you don't want to go to the countryside. You think the countryside is worse. If you're in the countryside, you complain, you complain, you complain, maybe not as much, but you don't want to go to the city because you think the city has negative things. If you live in the United States of America, you're not leaving because you think other countries are worse. If you're in another country and you go somewhere else, you're probably leaving because you think your country is worse or you think you can get something better from another place. So this whole idea that, oh, cultural relativism everywhere is the same, that's not true. Another thing is when people are talking about, oh, we need to be more like this other country. People normally talk about places like Norway, talk about places in Scandinavia. I hardly hear people talking about, hey, we need to be more like Venezuela, we need to be more like Haiti. Now, why is this? Now, part of the thing is, they talk about with the immigration thing. They're saying um, part of why immigration is an issue is because people in the United States of America are racist. They want a white ethno state, the alt right, or just people on the right in general. That's what they want, and that's what they need to stop. Yet, when somebody talks about a country like this, some people have already come out and said, oh, it's racist. He's talking about Haiti like this. He's talking about. Um, Venezuela like this, he's talking about Africa like this. I've already talked about how there's different races, different tribes in these countries, in these continents. But people understand that these are ethno states. They understand that, yes, if they're saying it's negative for the United States of America to have an ethno state, for the West to have an ethno state, then do they consider it negative that Haiti has an ethno state, that Venezuela has an ethno state, that El Salvador, that a lot of African countries are ethno states in their opinion? 
is that considered a negative thing? Now, as for the term shithole, what is a shithole? What do you actually consider to be a place where it is entirely shitty? And I would say that a lot of people in the United States of America who are going to be flipping out about this actually do consider some parts of their country a shithole, if not the entire thing, or if entire cultures. Not just deplorable, but think about this. If you really consider that some place in the United States of America is a rape culture, that is a shithole. You can't have a rape culture and not be a shithole. But at the same point, as I said, I don't think people literally mean that. I think they literally mean figurative because why would they stay if you really think a place is a shithole? Maybe you think everywhere else is even a bigger shithole so you can't even go. So this is the best shithole you can stay in. And then people are making efforts to change that shithole. Okay, so what do you guys think about these comments? Um, do you guys Are you guys offended by it? Are you surprised that he said this? Do you think it's cool that things are just being leaked? Do you think there should just be no lack of privacy? I mean, no pri expectation of privacy whatsoever, where just all these meetings should just be open door and everything should be said? Um, okay, last, I'm going to talk about uh, this picture. I'm going to put it up on the screen now. Okay, so the picture on the screen right now is... I think this was used as somebody who was mocking the whole idea of build the wall, the building the wall in the southern border of Mexico. They were trying to say, oh, it's not going to work because look at all these flight paths. Look at all the planes that fly into the United States of America. They have Minneapolis, St. Paul here, uh, Milwaukee, Indianapolis, Memphis, Detroit. So they're saying, oh, if you build the wall, it's still not going to work because most of the people come in. I mean, they still have all these other ways of coming in. So not only is buying a plane ticket and having that kind of control a lot more prohibitive than just walking across a border. I know walking across the border, there's some horrible situations that happen in there. First of all, it's just a long walk. It's dangerous in different ways, but it is cheaper. Even when it comes to the point of some people have to pay thousands for people to smuggle them across, when it comes down to it, if it's getting your entire family over there, or even if it's just yourself, it is cheaper. Because getting the process of going through and getting your passport, getting to an airport, getting through the checks. Now, this also does call into question other things. People have been saying that, yes, we need more than just the wall. Now, if you put this up and say, haha, the wall's not going to work, so look at all of this. First of all, you're pointing out that, yes, people still are coming in a lot. So you're making the point for Donald J. Trump that he should be concerned. People should be concerned about demographics. They should be concerned about these people coming in. Second, you're also calling into question, how are these people vetting people? If you're just saying people can just come in anyhow, do you really think the same people who can just walk across the border, who can use those kind of means, will be able to just pass through these things? Is their passport control in these countries horrible? Is their visa thing in these countries horrible? What are they checking and who's coming and going from their countries as well? Would you be able to do this, just leave United States of America, go to an airport and not be vetted to go to another place? Now, this also proves the point that Donald J. Trump made in this uh, New York Post article. He was saying it, of course, with his <laughs> general way that people are going to get triggered about and genuflect about. He said, people from Nigeria won't go back to their huts if you let them into, uh, into, um, let them into uh, the United States of America. Now, with this thing, when you're showing this thing in the airport thing, you're showing that, yes, most people do come in through legal means. Because, yes, even if it's might not be as stringent in all these countries checking passport stuff. They know me is a legal process to go through for you to be able to purchase a plane ticket, pass through the security thing, actually get to a country. You're not going to get to a United States airport as easily as you can just cross the border. If you get to the United States airport, you don't have a visa. They normally put you right back on the plane and send you back. Send you back. So there's a lot of visa overstays. So that's what Donald J. Trump is talking about in this situation where he says they're not going to go back if you let them in. It's a kind of situation where it's like you're saying that here you're saying look even if you build a wall all these people will come in and you're pointing out that visa overstays are actually some of the biggest parts of illegal immigration so that's not gaining points for you that's just proving the points on the other side different things happen for different reasons okay so back to the video so that's it for now that's it for this video i'm going to wind down the few things first of all speaking about shit this is a little garden out here and um Things that come out of shitholes are not necessarily bad things. In this sense, manure. Manure comes out, you put it in the grass, it grows out, there's some spiky melons over here, different kind of plants. But I wanted to talk about just finishing up this video 
I did a few videos about the controversy that occurred with the H&M with the coolest monkey in the jungle hiring an African-American uh, young male model to wear that. Some people flipped out, uh, genuflection all around. Um, but the mother of this child came out and said, you people need to get over this. So some people do need to get over things. Something like this Trump thing, I think get over it. People won't, but I wish more people would just get over it. The perception people have of different countries is different. When I had the chance, when there was discussions of me moving to the United States of America for the first time, this is back mid 90s, me and my brother looked online somehow, or somehow we found out the prices of PlayStation or something between Zimbab in Zimbabwe and United States of America because for some reasons those were the two countries we were potentially moving to from Kenya. And we decided we wanted to go to Zimbabwe. At least we had some conversations about that. Why? Because PlayStation was cheaper or something at that point. We'd also seen some few TV shows of like KKK crosses being burnt in yards. So we thought, okay, America's going to be just a racist, expensive place. Why would we want to go there? So just that's just a small by the side about that, about different perceptions people have of different countries. And I have a playlist called This Is, where I talk about different places that I'm in. Since I've been in Nairobi for a couple of months, there's a couple of videos there about Nairobi where you can see different parts of Nairobi that I see. That's not the entire story of Nairobi. That just happens to be the places where I happen to be at the time filming and choose to film and show it to you. But we live in a different time right now. Donald J. Trump can make this comment, it can be leaked, <laughs> and then I can hear it, I can make a video like this. Right now you guys can actually go on different live video things on YouTube, on Facebook, on many other platforms, and check out other countries. Find out, are those countries good? Are those countries bad? Can you go to those countries and check it out? places in your neighborhoods. There may be places across the town, across the city, a few miles away from you that you thought, I would never ever go there. And you can actually just talk to somebody there. Somebody can start filming from that place and you can see how that place is. Maybe you'll find out that yes, there's actually good reason for me to never want to be there. Or there may be good reason for you to actually go check that place out. But that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought about the comments. Um, are you still a supporter of Trump? Do you feel the need to defend this? I don't feel any need to defend that. I still think he's doing some positive enough things um, where I still think he's still glad he's the president of the United States of America. I don't necessarily feel that offended. I can imagine that a few years, a few maybe a decade back, I might have been more offended by these comments, but things happen. So as I mentioned in that This Is Nairobi series, if you watch that, you'll see a small percent of Nairobi and a small percent of what I see about Nairobi and choose to actually show you. How instructive or how descriptive is that of Nairobi? For example, this is a pretty good neighborhood I'm walking through here, going to the kiosk just to get some milk, and as you can see, there's no sidewalks, there's cow dung, there's trash, they're just putting up the street lights. If I told you about this in a city in United States of America, you'd say, okay, that's probably a shitty place. That's probably not a positive situation. You'd think that was kind of a bad kind of situation because of the expectations you have of that place. But what if I told you that most of Nairobi, most of Kenya in general, is people living in huts? If it's 75% of the people in Kenya still live in huts, then is Donald Trump right to say about a place like Nigeria, people wouldn't return to their huts? How much of a place do you have to see for it to be descriptive of that place? How much negative things about a place makes that place entirely negative? Because if you're complaining about that mud hut thing, anybody who's talking about rape culture or things like that, or patriarchy or toxic masculinity and these kind of things, or the deplorables or the hateful people about Donald J. Trump, things about Donald J. Trump or the supporters or politically like this, think about this. What percent of that group or place or thing do you use to say that is that person, that thing, that place? If it's less than 75% or even 50%, then Trump is not wrong for saying something like they won't return to their huts because they will return to their huts. If you think having a place where you have power lines, where you have the modern um, contemporary things you guys expect to have in a modern city, in a modern civilization, makes something not a shithole. And then majority of other countries don't have these things, at least up to 50% of the people don't, then are those places shitholes? Like, share, and subscribe. Links below to the merchandise store. I also did a coolest cracker in the cabinet shirt. Kind of a play off that coolest monkey in the jungle shirt. Check that out.
Like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye.